right? Yeah, it sort of is a thing of mine, isn't it? Now it's you brought a thing, it up. Right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got to think about that one. I don't know, maybe I'll have to talk to my therapist. Why do I do that? Without any further ado, he is the one, the only Chuck Garrick. Yay! Hello! What, a, what an intro. Wow. Oh my gosh. Right. Had a more exciting backdrop than just a gray <laughs> wall, but thank you for yeah. having me. It's good to be here. Thank you. Well, you got the exciting hat, so that counts, right? Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's one that didn't quite print off right, so I take all the misfit merch that we make and uh, <laughs> make it my own and, and hand it over to some of my friends and fans. I love misfit merch. That should yeah, be a thing misfit in itself. Merch. Yeah. Heck yeah, that's amazing. Well, okay, so but before we started, you were telling us right now the, the weather has been a little um unpredictable. Uh and <laughs> thing I, I know it's been pretty snowy where you are. We wanted to know, do you have a favorite snow day activity? Well, that's a pretty good question for me. I don't know if a lot of you know or a lot of people know, but I grew up in Lake Tahoe, California. So uh, I'm used to the snow and uh, this this snow here that we're getting in Nashville, it's beautiful. It's a good light snow. It's good powder snow. So it's, it's easily to it's easy to, you know, shovel the driveway and get the <laughs> snow off the vehicles and move forward if you want to get out. But it gets pretty cold here and icy. But, um, you know, as a kid growing up, look, I grew up in the mountains and uh, I spent a lot of time uh, snowboarding and skiing and I was actually skiing before there was even snowboarders, you know, I mean, it was just one of those things where it came on later in life as a teenager. I, I, grew, I grew up with anybody out there who knows, but uh, Glenn Plake was a couple of grades ahead of me. Sean Palmer was a guy that was a grade behind me. And uh, we, uh, we did a lot of skiing, a lot of those guys pretty much put snowboarding and especially Sean put it on the map. And Glenn, of course, is one of the biggest extreme skiers ever known for his famous Mohawk. But yeah, we did a lot, lots of snow skiing and um, and I spent a lot of time in the snow for sure. That's that's great. I was going to actually ask you, I know the Winter Olympics, they're, they're coming up pretty fast. They are rapidly approaching. Now, is that something you like to watch? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I got a buddy. Hagen is out there right now. He's uh, not sure what his status is. I know he was pretty close to be representing the U.S. in the snowboarding um, race, um, but uh, we're wishing him best of luck right now. I got to reach out to him. We've been texting the last couple of days, but uh, yeah, I love the I love Winter Olympics, of course. I mean, it's I love the Olympics in general. I just I don't know. I love the stories behind it and and uh and these these athletes are just so incredible but uh yeah this the, the ice skating figure skating to be honest with you is sort of one of my favorite uh yeah. so graceful you know oh oh ditto but yeah. my favorite is those people that you know watch from their couch like they're eating popcorn and they're like yeah. eh, you could have ran faster you could have jumped <laughs> higher i'm like you're not there no, like, no, I don't no. even know how nerve wracking this is on a global. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah they time. they make it look easy. I mean, you get up on those mountains and you're about to look. You look down and you're just gonna ski down this mountain and you just it's it can get pretty terrifying. Uh, and those athletes and you know most professionals make it uh, make it look effortless, which that's their job, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Well, you mentioned growing up in Lake Tahoe, so we did want to ask, what was the music scene like growing up there? <laughs> music scene? <laughs> there was no music scene Fair. in Lake Tahoe when I grew up. <laughs> I, I was fortunate enough to, um, uh, you know, Tahoe is very, um, you know, very transient and and especially growing up where, where how I grew up there, um, you know, there is very low populated uh, community where I grew up. So it was more like, Grateful Dead jam bands kind of stuff. But my uh, oldest sister married a guy by the name of Steve LaPointe, who was a drummer. And he played in the Red Bone Walker Blues Band. And, uh, and Steve, uh, when I got interested in music at a young age, he would bring over cassettes and vinyl and things like that of the Stones and Queen and Beatles and you know, Grand Funk Railroad, all this stuff. And then he would teach me a couple of bass lines. So I, I started getting in, getting into that music really early in my life. And then uh, my neighbors across the street from me, uh, well, you kind of walk through a field and then there was like this, this house. And then that was where my buddy John and Mike lived. And at the age of 16, Mike uh, could play like Eddie Van Halen and uh, 
you know, Zeppelin. He was he was a virtuoso, just a fantastic guitar player. And his brother John, who was my best friend, was yeah, you know, was a drummer. So um, they just needed a bass player to fill the <laughs> fill you know fill it out so we could do it. So I I bought a bass and uh, just sort of learned to go from there. And then we would play Kagers you know, backyard parties without a singer. And we'd be doing, you know, Maiden and Van Halen and, you know, Black Sabbath and whatever we could just, whatever I could learn basically, because those guys were just light years ahead of me at the time. But we just, that's how we would do it. We would just get whoever was drunk enough to try to sing some songs. And we'd have fun. We, had a, we had a great time growing up and, and, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of pressure, but, you know, there was, um, there were some really good musicians around town as I started to, you know, become better at my instrument. But, uh, yeah, Tahoe didn't have much of a music scene. It was more of just like whoever was throwing a party and that's where you ended up. And, uh, and we was a lot of those and they were a lot of fun to cut your teeth on and, you know, learn some covers. Yeah, I was clearly it was a good way to get started. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was going to mention like, we always like asking musicians from cities that aren't as, you know, like not necessarily like growing up in New York or Miami or Detroit. whatever. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I mean, so we had like Robert from Cream Magazine who grew up in Sheboygan. We're like, what's yeah. music like in Sheboygan? But you're, you're <laughs> yeah. like, it's not. Yeah, there was literally, I think maybe 10,000 people where I grew up and, and it was really small. And, uh, um, you know, it, obviously there was not a lot of bass players, so the competition <laughs> wasn't too thick. Um, nice. Yeah, but it was definitely it was it was it was really cool because you know it was my dad was a um, banjo player. He loved to play oh. old bluegrass. You know, he loved nice. the stories behind the traditional bluegrass songs. The Civil War was one of his favorite eras of of, of bluegrass music. Oh, sure. So we, he would, um, you know, the deal was, was, hey, you have to listen to one of my songs before he would listen to this. I would go, dad, you got to listen to this <laughs> Queen song or something. And he'd be like, all right, well, then you got to listen to this, you know, Bill Monroe tune or something. And then cool. we'd do that. And then and then he would get mad because I could play the I could play something quicker than he could or pick it up a little <laughs> sooner than he did. But um, yeah, he uh, he loved bluegrass. So I got to you know, I got to experience a little bit of that. And, you know, with with him, which was kind of the traditional style of music, which was a lot of fun. We went to a lot of bluegrass festivals and and um, things like that together. And we'd go camping and, and we I love the bluegrass, but I used to have my headset on and I'd have like except and you know maiden and uh, <laughs> you know all the other just playing in my head the whole time but i also really have an appreciation for all styles of music um but i think mostly i just had a really good time just you know hanging around and having having a good time having a few beers listening to music camping out and it was a, it was a fun it was a fun time did you ever dabble in the banjo yeah, I did. I um, I still have my dad's banjo. You know, he passed away, gosh, like twenty something years ago. But I still have his banjo. I was really heavy into it for a long time, and uh, uh, I I still can play a little bit. But uh, it's an instrument that I just constantly feel like I keep threatening to keep pick back up and learn. You know. I think it might, who knows, maybe it'll make its way into Bisto. Who knows? I was going to ask. It's not a bad threat. I, I love know, a banjo. It's so funny because I was, when I was really into it, I was in LA. It was in the nineties. And, um, uh, and I just would playing it all the time, playing, playing, playing. And my buddy was playing the Roxy and he goes, Hey, uh, the opening band canceled tonight. Can you, you want to play a couple of banjo songs? And I forgot about this until like, a, I don't know, about a month or two ago, my buddy said to me, he said, hey, remember that time you played the banjo at the Roxy? And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so yeah, so I played just two songs, if I remember correctly. And uh, it was probably terrible, but it was a lot of fun. So I've, I've uh, you know, but I have uh, played live. So who knows? I, I definitely want to bring it into Bisto at some point. I play the harp in Bisto, might as well throw the banjo in yeah might as well i love it i love it so much and i was gonna also ask uh you had posted something on your instagram today which looked like a truck back full of uh, a plethora of guitars are you packing all those that's a lot of guitars that's like that that picture man kind of stressed me out when i saw how those guitars were packed right i mean that's like oh my god <laughs> somebody's wanting to get out of town early like something something's just going down right um, yeah, I, you know, that's just, um, something I'd seen on uh, Instagram. I thought it was funny. Oh there's my a, God. There's a, there's a, um, 
uh, Instagram site called One Minute Base, I think it's called, and uh, they've got a lot of good material. So I I stole it. Okay, it's yours now. Yeah. <laughs> Danica, you're still muted. Okay, there you go. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> well, um, let's talk a little bit about when you guys go on tour. Um, so are there any particular roadside attractions or, or golf courses perhaps that you really enjoy well, visiting? Well, yeah. I mean, when you're on the road with Alice, I'm assuming that's who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, there is a lot of golf. Um, <laughs> you know, he, he's, he's, he's definitely got me hooked on to the sport and I, I absolutely love it. Um, and we do play, play quite a bit on the road and that is something we look forward to doing. Um. As anybody knows that has toured, it's it's a wonderful lifestyle. It's um, it's very unique. Um, and uh, but there's a lot of downtime, so it's it's nice to have something that you can do to you know kill some time and get outside and wake up early and instead of staying up all night and you know doing stuff that you know you probably shouldn't be doing. But um, we uh, we enjoy it. So yeah, there's there's that. And you know, look, man, everybody knows that there's nothing like a good truck stop. So we, we all roll in, we roll into there and just try to get the strangest looks from the clerk and the rest of the customers out of there. I, I, I was going to say, I feel like I've seen you post a lot of pictures in, in bathrooms. I'm not sure where these bathrooms are, but right. Yeah. It sort of is a thing of mine, isn't it? Now you brought it's a it thing, up. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got to think about that one. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to talk to my therapist. Why do I do that? I don't know because you know, like all these clubs have these great bathrooms and stickers and penises on the walls, and just it's just ridiculous. And some of the best art I've ever seen. Like, wow, you got to show the world. Spends you know? as much time, like these guys or girls, whoever it is, really have really developed quite the skill for talking <laughs> balls. It's impressive. I mean, it's like wow. So I don't know. I, and and you know, of course, the ones with the with the stickers everywhere, and you know everything else. I I don't know. I just to me, it's just kind of the epitome of what rock and roll and and what you know the club touring life is is like. So <laughs> I try to take as many photos as I can, and now I will do even more. As you, you know, should. No paying attention. <laughs> We're watching. We're paying oh, yeah. attention. <laughs> so uh, when you are on tour, besides like the obvious, um, is there something that you always like to bring with you on the road? Something that you pack with you uh, just that you can't leave home without? Um, really? No. I mean, uh, let me think about that. Outside of my instruments and, uh, you know, it used to be, uh, you know, how was I going to listen to to music and, and get inspired and, and those type of things? I, I try to, you know, now with Spotify, everything makes it easy. So now I think more than anything, the one thing I make sure I pack is just a way to, to listen to music inside my hotel room, whether it's like a nice Bluetooth speaker or whatever. I'll, I hate the gym. I hate going to those in any hotel gyms or anything like that. So I'll, I'll listen to music and do a little workout in my room or whatever, and, and then go for a run or something. But for the most part, you know, um, I try to pack as light as I possibly can. I'm, I'm just tired of all the stuff that I have to accumulate and or I have accumulated and that I have to bring with me. So um, over the last couple of years, I just figured if I'll just buy it on the road and then either just get rid of it at the end of the tour or, or whatever. Cause I just, I don't want to be backpacking all this crap with me anymore. I'm over it. You don't want the stuff. Uh, but I, I was also going to ask, okay, so you're talking about, you have your music in your hotel room. Now, Danik and I have heard stories that people don't like to room next to Glenn because he's up all night banging with drumsticks. Is this true? Can you confirm? I can definitely confirm. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Um, I've okay. never met anybody like that in my entire life. He's just, um, I love Glenn to death. I mean, he's, he's one of my best buddies and I love, you know, making music with him and he's an incredible musician, incredible individual, but he's just, it's just Glenn drums and food and that's it. And, uh, and sleep. And if he gets none of those, he's just impossible to deal with. He'll be the first to admit, but yeah, he'll be up tapping around and banging on furniture all night long. Like, and I, you know, for me, I really admire that because it means he's just constantly present with his instrument and with music. And I, I really find that to be uh, quite admirable. But okay. um, we have all requested to not room next to Glenn. Yeah. Okay. But I do appreciate your perspective on the whole thing. It is a beautiful, <laughs> it beautiful, is. very nice perspective. Yeah, of course. 
So we also wanted to ask, what would you say is something that you want audiences or attendees to know about bands being back on the road now after this whole pandemic and slash maybe a little bit during it? Yeah. You know, I just want, I think everybody should know, and I think we all have realized how um, fortunate we really are, you know, and how easy it is to take things for granted, right? So it, it, what, what I would want everybody to know is that we, we miss it as much as, as you do. And it's just as important for us to be on stage and entertaining and touring. It is for some people to actually see a live show and know that it still exists. And it's an opportunity for people to get out of the house. And, you know, some of our fans have met other fans and have either started dating or got married or or become best friends and it's just a great community of people that it's too bad that it's just got you know swept away from all of us so it's just as important to us and and we um as a band with alice and as bisto blanco really um i've noticed everybody really living with a lot more gratitude especially when we have the opportunity to um to go back out there and, and play again. So it's it's very important because it is for me it's it's part of my heartbeat, you know. It's, it's part of who I am. I've been doing the same thing whether professionally or not. I, I laugh at myself all the time because it's like I'm, I'm still the same guy. I'm still 14 years old going to band practice. I mean, that's just what I've done. And um, so it's become very important to me. And, and when it got taken away, it was uh, it was fine at first, but as it kind of went longer and longer than everyone expected, you know, you started to think about like, hey, did I really take advantage of my situation and how lucky I had it? And, and what can I do now to, to make it better when it does come back? And so I did a lot of reflecting and I think like most people did. And then I made sure I, I just, you know, my head's up a little higher and I'm, I'm looking around and and uh, taking a chance to just take everything in because you just never know, right? Oh, that is so Absolutely. true. Well yeah, played. and I uh, I feel really blessed and honored that I got to see you guys play a couple of months back in West Palm. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm gonna say it was my favorite that my favorite Alice show. Um, was it that was, um, West Palm? Was that just recently? Yeah, the I Think Arena. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was yeah. very recent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I know you guys are getting ready to resume tour, uh, and yeah. then you also have the Monsters of Rock cruise coming up. Yeah. So, uh, oh, gosh, look at that. <laughs> there's a lot of yeah, it's, it's <laughs> happening. It's happening. I know we got to. You know, it's funny. It, I love this stuff because, like, all of a sudden, I go, "What? We're playing Poughkeepsie? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I don't even know. You know, I don't even know some of these dates until they come out. That's great. But yeah, so Alice. Um, uh, and uh, I think some of these are going to be with Buck Cherry and Ace Freely, which that's going to be really cool about, you know, cool to tour with. And then uh, the Monsters of Rock Cruise, as everybody knows, Alice Cooper will be on that as long as, as well as Bisto Blanco. And, uh, and Buck Cherry's on there, Lit, Skid Row, it's going to be killer. Oh LA Guns, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. I wish you guys were going, it's too bad you waited so long. Yeah, listen, this is what happens when you snooze, you lose. I am the <laughs> definition of that. Don't be like me. Yeah. Be more like Bisto. Don't that's be like okay. me. Yeah, I that's know. okay. Though. You're, you're, you're on the waiting list. You'll get in. Fingers and toes crossed. We yeah. we are hoping. We are hoping. Um, okay. So one of the things you also wanted to ask, Alice says that he guarantees money, you will see the world, and you will get stitches. So we are curious, how many stitches have you gotten on the road with Alice? Yeah, I got stitches in my my thumb right here. Um, but he's he's right about all of it. Um, <laughs> I've seen the world. I've I've gotten paid. I could use a little bit more money if he's got some laying around. <laughs> no. Why not? You know. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we've done that. And then there was a um, uh, well, a couple of times. Something happened. The only time I actually got stitches was a picture frame. So a fan made him a, um, a picture in a frame and we hit a bump or something and it fell and a piece of glass flew and it Ooh. cut my thumb open. Oh. And uh, yeah, I had to go run off and we were in Canada. So I had to run off and go get stitches in the middle of the night. But it was cool. I got to wrap my hand up and it, you know, it looked like it was a really bad accident. <laughs> I looked really tough and scared. <laughs> but, um, but he had a one time we were in Russia. I'll never forget. He was, um, he, you know, he's always got 
some sort of weapon. I love him so much because, you know, he's in the knife throwing now and he's wielding a sword. And, mm -hmm. and at times I've gotten, he's hit me in the, like, I'll be playing and he swings a sword around and it hit my hand. But he had one night in particular, I'll never forget. He had this knife and it was in a sheath, you know, what a sheath is right. So oh, sure. like a hold, hold for the, where the knife goes in a little quiver or whatever, but he couldn't get the knife out of the thing. And he's like trying and he just, does it really hard. And when he did the sheath like flew and hit me right in the collarbone, really super hard. I, um, I thought it was the knife for a second. So we both were like kind of staring at each other. And this was like, before I was like, you know, little Zen guy, cause I come from a little bit of a rough background. So I kind of have a short temper I used to have and I flared up, you know, <laughs> and he looked at me like, Oh no, no, no. You know, and it, was, it was kind of a thing. I just it hurt really bad. But then I, it was, I looked down the ground, it was the sheath. And then we, we kind of laughed, but um, <laughs> you know, I got bruises, I've got scars, I've got stitches gotten to see wow. the world and I've got to play um, with the best artist in the world uh, touring with Alice Cooper and getting to know him and, and his family has been, just a true honor. I mean, the guy's legendary. He's obviously doing exactly what he was supposed to be doing with his life. He's never phoned it in. He's an incredible entertainer, incredible mind, incredible human being. And um, uh, I just would, you know, hope that this, uh, this life never ends. As long as he's touring, I'm there. You better be. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're coming to see you, so. Oh, yeah, uh, I like it. We have a couple of people asking uh, when Bisto Blanco uh, might tour again as well. Yeah, so we've got the Monsters of Rock cruise coming up. That's our closest one we have at this time. And there are uh, talks. Um, as you know, everybody's getting kind of back uh, at it again. And um, we've been, uh, Bisto's been in the studio and we've, We've uh, been writing a lot and there's a lot of stuff going on right now. We've got quite a bit of stuff kind of building up and we just haven't released yet. But um, we're just we're going to wait till the timing's right when we can all get back at it. And when we can um, and do it right and do it safely. And uh, that's when we'll we'll be back out there. So there are no dates other than the Monsters of Rock cruise at this point. So that means, hey, you know. Got to get on that boat. I know. Cool. And, uh, <laughs> and in the meantime, we'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll, everybody just stay posted and, and we'll be announcing dates, I'm sure, at some point uh, because it, it is starting to open up a little bit more. Oh, thank goodness. And yeah. uh, Stephen also wants to know uh, do you have a favorite bass of all time or currently? Um, I have one bass. Well, I, I take that back. I, I, I have a bass that I is a go-to for me, but um, lately with Alice, I've been playing the uh, Thunderbirds, the Gibson Thunderbirds, and I've just got those things just dialed and singing so beautifully on stage with Alice. I'm really loving playing my Thunderbirds as well as my, um, my 73 P bass. Um, it's, it's the, it's the one man. There's something special about that piece of wood. It just, it just vibrates. It just, it's sonically just, it just does what you want it to do. And it reacts to different sounds and tones. And, and it just seems to fit into whatever style of music I'm recording or, or playing live with, or, or just messing around at the house. So it's a, it's a great bass. It has a lot of sentimental value to it. Uh, for me, it's was uh, Chris Leahy's my, uh, the guy who got me the audition with uh, Ronnie James Dio. He was my best buddy before all of this when we were kids and he was a bass player and uh he sold me the bass uh when i joined up with dio and it's it's been in all over the world and played on some great records all of alice's records and and uh yeah so it's it's a very sentimental piece of uh of wood that um a lot of us that knew chris see that bass and instantly just have a memory of uh of that instrument and chris obviously wow I love the way that you talk about your instrument. It's like so beautiful. Like uh, it's made me a little wow. well, it has life, you know. It's a living, breathing thing. I mean, it it is. I I you know, it's 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 I, you know, it just depends on, you know, these things and and what you can do with it and um and I have to I've learned to kind of, you know, um let it 
you know, it, it dictates at times on what, what's happening. And you learn so much from playing instruments and you learn so much about yourself and, and your limitations and also learning new things is, is fun. You know, it makes you, uh, uh, just makes you feel alive, you know, and I'm all about that. You know, I support good times. So, so do we, so do we. Yeah. Uh, so Danica, why don't we each ask one more question then we'll go to the game. All right. We are going to pivot just slightly and ask a little bit of a random question here. But so a few months back, we had Albert and Joe Bouchard from Blue Oyster Cold on our stream. And uh, we had to ask them the same thing. So I kind of wanted to get your take on this. Um, the use of the umlaut became really popular for a time there. Um, so uh, what would you say made you kind of incorporate that into Vista Blanco? Motorhead. Just Motorhead. Right. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Fair. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, it's I, a, it, it, the umlauts are something obviously we don't use in in the states. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I grew up just you know, Motorhead was was it for me, and and uh, I still they still are it for me, and and I, I talk can't blame to, you. <laughs> yeah, I talked to Mickey and, and Phil and and, and his management and all those guys uh, quite a bit, uh, a lot actually, and uh, I don't know, they just. Um, when I thought of a band, anytime I there was a letter where a new lot would fit over it, it was like, okay, let's put it over. It looks cool. <laughs> I like it. Perfect. <laughs> Done. Is it on the hat. It is, there it is. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> that wasn't part of the misfit print. You got the umlauts in there. You're good to go. Uh, misfit merch. <laughs> misfit merch. Okay. So uh, final question before the game. And a few people have commented asking about it as well. Uh, we wanted to know about ACEs joint repair. Um, mm. What can you tell us about it? Uh, I know it's a CBD rub, all natural, um, good given question. to people at uh, all right, performances. Here's the yeah. Here's the deal. This is going to change your life, everybody. Let's now, go. pay attention. This is this is just as important as music, because Aces makes you feel good, makes you feel good in different ways. So Aces is a company that is located in Portland, Oregon, and I am now partnered up. Also, not just partnered up, but an invested owner of this brand, uh, Aces Joint Repair. Now we do a lot of things under one roof, and I'll just going to just tell you a little bit about the company first. We do all of the extractions. We do everything in-house. The only thing we don't do is grow the hemp. The hemp is outsourced from several different companies that we use and it's the, the best out there. Uh, we do all the fabrication of all the equipment that we use to do any of the extractions is actually made in-house. We also do the extractions. We have we do the um, we we sell the, the the raw material as far as the isolates go. So there's several different ways of um, a certain different types of cannabinoids. So they're uh, they're called, but there's CBD, CBN, CBC. There's lots out there, and what we focused on is a couple of different ones. But what's what we're really pushing for right now is uh, this mentholated CBD rub, which Aces is of and if you go to acesjointrepair.com i see it right there and if you do if you go to the backslash solid rock that's fine too you can do that but you can also just go to acesjointrepair.com and if you want to purchase something you can use chuck 67 chuck 67 as your code and um it's either chuck 67 or chuck 1967 hold on <laughs> hold, hold please on. hold please <laughs> Oh, let's see. It oh. is. Yes. Yeah, so it's Chuck 1967. That'll be your code when you check out and you get you get 25 percent off. But before you go there, you need to know a couple of things. So Aces mentholated rub it has the most amount of CBD in any product on the market because we control everything in house. We control the uh, the amount of CBD that goes into each product. And so a lot of these over-the-counter CBDs that people are getting, if you look at them, they're just really, really low in the CBD. Mm -hmm. They're just more about the oils and that make it smell good. But as far as the actual product CBD that's in there, there's not a lot in there. Well, Aces does have the most amount in their product. And the CBD is what makes it work. So CBD is an anti-inflammatory. So the thing that's nice about this product is that when you do apply it to sore muscles or joints, there's sore joints that you have in your hands, your knees, your legs, wherever. Um, also, it, it helps with <laughs> bug bites and sunburns. And it's just something if you apply at nighttime, it does relax you and help you go to sleep. There's zero, 
zero THC in this product as well. So if you do have a drug test coming up or you are concerned about having one, you will not show any symptoms or any, any, um, anything with THC in it. So it's only there for a pain relief. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful product. And, uh, and the nice thing about uh, ACEs is we also have a company underneath the same roof called Silo 8, which we do all the graphics. So anybody out there that sees the ACEs graphics knows that they're killer and they are headed by Mike Wilmot. And Mike Wilmot is the mind behind Alistair Fiend. I don't know if you guys remember him, but he was the Nikki Six Motley Crue character, the comic kind of the um, animation character back in the yes. days. He looks like Nikki. You, you look him up. Okay. That's Mike Wilmot when he was a teenager. And then Mike's gone on to do artwork for the Black Crows and, you know, Skinny Puppy, Faster Pussycat, everybody. Then worked for Michael Jordan, Nike, Mattel. A Hot Wheels, you name it. He's just phenomenal. So we do all of that in-house too. So the reason why I'm telling you that is you'll see Aces in quite a several, in quite a few different locations now, but all the packaging can be made unique to different store locations. And, oh. um, but uh, I suggest you guys give it a try. If you want to just get some samples, uh, you can go to acesjointrepair.com backslash chuck i believe and they'll send you some free samples of of the single use packets but um it's it's not that expensive for a three and a half ounce can let me grab some hold on okay thank you and we appreciate the education too because yeah. i think a lot of people are yeah so you'll see like it's it, this stuff is amazing and it works really well so this this is the uh the can of aces Ooh. and this is a three and a half ounce can and uh you can see here that's in there. Mm. Oh, can you smell it? <laughs> mm. Yes, it's with this new technology. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everything in here is organic except for the menthol. It's all natural. Uh, it's you know, it's it's all good and everything's healthy for you. Look, it's a healthier, you know, solution than icy hot or Ben Gay or or uh, Tiger Bomb. You know, because it's all natural material in there. Or it's people like me CBD. who just pop a leave every single day. Yeah, Don't do it. <laughs> Get off that mm -hmm. stuff. I've had this friend of mine use it now. Uh, my my buddy, uh, Chris, and his wife, she has um, degenerative uh, arthritis in her hands. Bad. She has to get shots monthly. Oh, she God. started using ACEs. And this is no joke. I'm not trying to pitch you guys or tell any of your audience or whatever that this is some miracle thing. It's not. But I'm going to tell you this. This is a God's honest truth. She has stopped getting shots. Wow. <laughs> It's, that's it's rad. because of the in, inflammation. I mean, that's what the shots do. It, it, it takes away that inflammation, and that's what the CBD does in this product. This is the box of the uh, single-use package. This is a, an affordable way to go about it if you guys just want to get these guys. Um, you know, it comes with these single-use packets here that you can use. And then this is our golf line. Check this out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so check this out. You open this box up. It's, 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 it's like a little, you know, it's like a little present. Each thing yeah. <laughs> You got the little thing there, and then you open up this, right? And then you open up this guy here. Let's see how this goes. Come on. I'm trying to do this. Oh, yeah, there it goes. And then ta da. And then there's Aww. a little guy all in there. But then, so the can fits in here, you know? So it looks like that. So you open it up. Yeah, so it's all cool. And it's a great product. I and I would not get behind, I don't get behind anything I don't believe in. And I truly believe in this company and um, the, the, especially the people that are behind it. They're the, the, the main guy, uh, James, is just extremely passionate about CBD. And it's like talking to somebody who loves wine or whiskey or beer or, you know, instruments. He's just he knows everything about it. He has spent most of his life just studying this um, and the benefits of it. And, um, we're just trying to get it out there to the masses. So if anybody has any questions, just, um, uh, email me. That could be oh, I'm sold. Chuck at aces. <laughs> Heck yeah. No, thank you so much. That sounds great. Yeah. I can't wait to try them after mm -hmm. the stream. You have our word. We're going to get mm -hmm. some, but yes, yeah. thank you so much. That's yeah. That's let me know if you need anything. Plus we have some cool little tank tops and stuff. I'll send uh, you some. Ooh. So drop, drop me your address. I'll get you guys some merch. Done. Um, yep. Misfit merch. Thank you. I'll, I'll take Misfit merch any day. Yeah, I'll take it. So, uh, okay. So before we wrap it up, we do have a game of Would You Rather. Uh, as you asked earlier, there's no spelling involved, no math, no science, <laughs> just yes or no. You, you pick 
you pick. So no wrong uh, answers here. Yeah, there's You're no wrong good. answers. And uh, all right, uh, no pressure. You'll nah. be just great. You'll be ah, just fine. Need the pressure. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, let's bring them up. Okay. So the first one: Would you rather ride cross country on motorcycles with Bruce Springsteen or ride cross country on motorcycles with Bob Dylan? Bruce Springsteen. Okay. I like his bike too. It looks like that. <laughs> is that a soft tail I'm seeing there? Let's see what we got here. Yeah, you tell us. We oh, couldn't yeah. tell you. Yeah, it looks like yeah. a soft tail there. <laughs> Arlie, I like, uh, you know, I don't know. I, both would be pretty cool. I, I think, uh, I just think I would have a little bit more in common. Uh, Bruce seems like he might be a little bit more of an outgoing guy. So I, I, I'll, I'll ride with, with Bruce Springsteen and, um, you know, I've jammed with his pedal steel player before, Marty Rifkin. Uh, nice. Box masters, so we have a little bit of something in common. Um, so Bruce Springsteen, final answer. Okay, correct. Good answer. Good answer. All right, here's the next one. Danica, right. <laughs> would you rather have a music video featuring zombie luchadors or have a music video featuring the band as 1960s claymation? Ooh. <laughs> that looks pretty creepy. The claymation. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to do the 1960s claymation. Zombies are kind of played out. Okay. Let's do it. Final answer, 1960s claymation. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, correct. <laughs> Looks more <Correct>. vintage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I love it. I Here's love the next it. one. Uh, would you rather own an original uh, bass that belonged to Paul McCartney or one that belonged to Lemmy? Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. That's we terrible. have to ask. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, you're going um, with the umlaut. <laughs> you know, um, come on. I think even Lemmy would pick the bass from Paul McCartney. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, I'll pick the bass from Paul McCartney for sure. I, 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 I'm going to say, yeah, but that bass you see there of Lemmy's, I've actually played that a couple <gasps> of times. So. But um, I haven't played that other one there to the left, Paul. So I'll, I'll take the... Um, the original bass that belonged to Paul McCartney. Final answer. Okay. All Plus, right. if I had that bass, my retirement will be even better. <laughs> Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Next one. Would you rather put your head in the guillotine or wear the Frank and Alice outfit? Oh, yeah. You know what? I'll put my head in the guillotine anytime. That Frankenstein outfit is just... Uh, it just looks super uncomfortable. No, thanks. I'll put my head in the guillotine. That way I, yeah. You know, it, it, hey, look, it obviously, um, I don't know. There's some sort of magic behind it. Alice keeps coming back. So I hope that that happened to me as well. So <laughs> head in the guillotine, uh, final answer. And I, I feel like, you know, it, we do ask this question of all the band members, but I feel like we always get the same answer because everybody usually cites the smell of the costume <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> as a reason to not be in it. <laughs> It just, I don't know, man. I just see that thing is, yeah, you know, uh, I don't know. Just so many things can go wrong. I kind of have, like, I, when I see the guys moving around in that thing, I go, what if they just one misstep and then it's attached to their head? I don't know if you guys know that, but they wear a helmet. Oh. Well, that's how, when they turn, that's how the head turns. Oh, man. That just, I don't know, boom, <laughs> fall over and then, I don't know. Not into no it. Guillotine. I'd rather just lose it. Boom, cut it off. <laughs> Done. One and done. All right. No, I'm going okay. to hospital. <laughs> All right. Here's the next one. Uh, would you rather be an extra in a Rob Zombie film or write the score for a horror film? Uh, be an extra in a Rob Zombie film or write the score. Um, you know, I think I would rather write the score. Um, okay. I, 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 it, I mean, an extra. You know, that could just be a guy at the grocery store. Featured extra? Yeah, fair enough. If I would be, yeah, if I would be somebody like, if I'd be a main character, like had several speaking roles, so I could, you know, make some uh, residual payments. Sure. Okay. Uh, but writing the score, I think, to a horror film would be a blast. Mm -hmm. um, that seems like it would be fun and collaborative, which would be a lot of fun. I get to probably work with a lot of fun musicians and, and do some, you know, Get, get creative that way. So uh, write the score to a horror film. Final answer. Okay. It's a good one. Uh, and 
Yeah. Another reason to incorporate a banjo, you know. I feel hey, like you know, it, right. Nothing more scary than a banjo, especially in the woods. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've all learned that life lesson. <sighs> uh, I think this is you, Danica, right? Yeah. Would you rather do a Bisto Blanco album of Christmas covers or have Bisto Blanco songs turned into a lullaby album? Yeah, I would love to do a Bisto Blanco Christmas album. Uh, yes, that would be a blast. I mean, I think, you know, vocally, there's so much we could do with just the way Calico and I, you know, work well together and how we work yeah. together. And man, she is just crushing it. Her vocals oh are just God. insane. She's yeah. become such a force and such a power behind her vocals lately. I would love to hear what she could do with a couple of them. Yeah, okay. yeah she's it. incredible. And I, I would, I'd be down to do that. So yeah, do a Bisto Blanco album of Christmas covers. Final answer. All right. You already have people offering to buy it. So All right. uh, <laughs> pressure's on. Okay. Um, <laughs> Here's the next one. Uh, would you rather go back in time and have a conversation with Elvis or go back in time and have a combo with Janice Joplin? Ooh, dang, that's a really good question. Both are amazing. Where is this conversation taking place? Not the bathroom. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let, let's say just uh, in a... Look, I, 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 I'm always going to be nostalgic here and I'm going to have to say, you know, early Elvis, 100%, especially during that time in his life right there. That was my favorite Elvis. Um, and nothing bad against Janice. I absolutely love her. And um, uh, man, I just really, you know, when I think about her passing, just what a shame and sad that was because she was just so amazing but yeah I, I and i would love to talk to janice you know and i would just love to tell her like i would just say hey you're amazing and don't don't let all those demons get into your head and all that past stuff that we have to go through as kids growing up and getting teased and bullied and all that shit because that woman was a force to be reckoned with changed rock and roll and uh, talk about somebody who just went somewhere else when they sang and performed on stage she just turned into a completely different person i have so much respect for her uh and i love it i love i think she was gone way too soon and i enjoy her music so much and uh, i'm so grateful for her but you know where would we be without elvis presley um i would love to sit and um you know have a drink and conversation with elvis and his band and and uh, maybe get up there and jam a little bit and, and have some fun with those guys because they look like they had fun. They were just out there shooting guns and riding motorcycles and <laughs> in Memphis and doing everything that was uh, forbidden. So I'm, I'm down with the uh, hanging with Elvis for sure. So back in time and have a convo with Elvis. Final answer. Yeah. Final answer. Okay. All right. Here's Very the next cool. one. All right. Would you rather <laughs> this, uh, drink 20 Arnold Palmers before hitting the stage or, <laughs> or bench press Arnold Palmer 20 times? Oh, man. I don't think I'm going to have to bench press Arnold Palmer. I'm diabetic. I would go and I would just die. Jesus. Would, look at what you guys trying to do. Kill me. Yeah. Drink sugar free. Alcohol. Sugar They're free. Not, they are yeah. sugar free still. That's a lot of drinks. I think it'd be <laughs> fun to try to bench press Arnold Palmer 20 times. I mean, I don't think I could bench press one of him, but I sure would love to try. That would be fun. <laughs> okay. Right? Why not? Bench press Arnold Palmer. Let's have some fun. What fun yeah. is drinking 20 Arnold Palmer? That's not fun. No one. <laughs> No one would stick around to view that. Would you stick around to see me bench press all on a palm? Hell yes, yeah. I would. I know I would. All right. That's all right. Final answer. Okay. And I think, let's see, is this the last one we have? Okay. This is the all final right. one. Would you rather play a round of golf with Weird Al or play a round of golf with Bill Murray? Oh, wow. Okay. Good question. So I don't know if you guys know, and these, these are great great would you rathers by the way because it looks like you guys have definitely done your homework you know that i've backed up weird Al's for the last eight years in maui and we've made lots of fun music together now yes. i love this guy he is incredible um always one of the best performers every year uh, in maui uh he just brings just such a unique uh musical direction every year and some people just love it and other people are like going what i don't get it you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the song Albuquerque. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. Of course. Of course. You understand? Okay. It just goes on forever. Oh, yes. Oh, my and, God. Yeah. And so his bit was, hey, in the middle of the song, I, I want to start. We, we have to stop. And then I 
I, I make a mistake and then we have to start over. <laughs> and, and we're like, oh my God, this is hilarious. So I would always bring Calico in to sing backgrounds with Al because she was good with the interaction with him. They, the two of them would just, would just go crazy together. It was a lot of fun. They're really creative. And she's, you know, her, her vocals really lent itself to Al uh, and the harmonies that he wanted. But um, yeah, we used to have so much fun and I, I miss jamming with him for the, for the New Year's. And to this day, I'm going to tell you one of the best emails I ever get is a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year email card from Weird Al and his family. And who would have ever thought? It's very special to me. Um, uh, he's He's been nothing but just wonderful to make music with. He's always in a great mood, always professional. Um, he reminds me a lot of Alice when he's rehearsing, he's kind of doing his, he walks and does his markings and things and figure out what he's going to do. And when it comes to showtime, he's just, he turns into, to Weird Al and, and we just have a riot. But since I've played with so much music with, with, with Al, um, and I've never really had the opportunity to meet, um, Bill Murray, who I, I, I love and obviously have seen every single movie and I just think, and he just looks like he'd be a blast to play golf with. And my golf game has definitely gotten a lot better. So I'm going to say that I would love to play around with, with Bill Murray. I think that that would be epic. I would love every minute of it. I think we would have a lot of fun. And then after the round of golf with Bill Murray, then, then possibly I'd want to bench press. On the <laughs> what a day. I mean, think about it. And I could tell, I could tell Bill about the horror movie I just scored. <laughs> he might be in it. You, you never know. Hey, 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 maybe I'll have him do some voiceover in it too. Oh, you know, be my fun. Gosh. Um, um, yep. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. This is, um, wrap up. <laughs> yes. And you got all of them right. So good, oh, yeah. good job. Good job. 100%. So I will say, wow, good. You know, school was never really my thing. I think that was the first time I've ever scored a hundred percent on anything. Yeah. We're proud a of plus. you. Good. A plus plus. Well, um, <laughs> this has been such a joy. Um, you are amazing. Um, we respect you and you're, Aww. you're so talented and your energy is just Oh, thank so you. You too. Thank amazing. you both so much. You're really great host and what a great, you. you know, um, platform you guys have. And it's wonderful. I love, I saw all the people that you had on your show before and just, I love the way you mix it up and keep doing what you're doing. It's phenomenal. And, uh, Hey, I see Chris on there. Chris is a Nashville guy. Yeah. It's it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I really, really love what you guys are doing and um, keep it up and uh, I'll, I'll come back anytime. Uh, well, we're going to hold you to that. Um, yeah, no yes, problem. yes, yes. Uh, before we do let you go, Chuck, we're going to go over our upcoming guests that we have for January and I think maybe even starting February. Uh, so we're, uh, and I guess next week, oh my goodness. So I was on a show last night on Fox called I Can See Your Voice. And Everybody go watch it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God it was oh my amazing. God. I got to sing with Jewel. It was so great. So we actually have the executive producer next week, Logan Clark. And then the following week, we have uh, artist Jacob Bryant. And then at the end of the month, we're welcoming back Clown Viz, who I just love. And he's amazing. Clown Viz looks boring. Oh, that's your brother. Looks like no fun at all. Like, like news up. fest. I know. Seriously, just oh, I am worst. definitely sticking around. I am tuning in January twenty seventh. For sure. Yeah, you don't want to miss him. He's amazing. We love Clown Viz so much. But uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I hope you get to throw more snowballs tonight if it's not too cold. Hey, let's hope so. And let's hope to um, hopefully Bruce heard that i want to ride motorcycles with him because i want to ride motorcycles with anybody we'll I'm, out there. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready awesome well uh until we meet again uh this is talk culture and chuck thank you so much and we will see you guys real soon bye thank everybody you guys. take care everybody be safe yeah.